Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Big Bro Lamar Ludi, coming to you again with another deck list today. Uh, I thought I'd get in the spirit of Mother's Day and come to you guys with the Bulma deck, Bulma Familial Bonds. This is a budget build of the deck. Um, I Personally, I like to take my decks uh, different from everybody else. I try not to neck deck them. I try to come up with ideas that are my own and original. And just, it helps with, with having the game um, keep its fun and surprise, you know, the surprise ability of the, ge of the, of the game, if that's, if that's even a word, surprise ability. But um, I want to go ahead and show you this. This is continuing the deck building series. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at you know, my thought process behind putting this deck together. Um, as you can see here, this deck's only ten bucks, ten dollars and seventy-two cents overall. And here's a breakdown of all the prices for the different cards. Of course, um, take my deck lists and improve upon them, find ways to make them even better. Um, one of the things I love about Dragon Ball Super Card Game is the price. You know, you can get into the game; it's very affordable, and you can build something that's really fun, and you can have a great time with it. So let's go ahead. and We're going to look at the deck. Um, first of all, we've got our leader Bulma. And she's got um, an ability where she's going to give all Saiyans and Earthlings blocker uh, in the battle area. They're going to gain the blocker ability. Um, on her unawakened side, she has a once per turn effect where she can draw one card. So that's useful. It's going to give you hand control. Uh, when your life is down to four or less, you're going to uh, restand two energy and flip this card over. And when you flip her over to her awakened side, she's Bulma Familial Bonds. So permanent, she's still giving all Saiyans and Earthlings in the battle area blocker, so that's good to protect to protect your leader. And then the once per turn, now she can draw two cards. So you're gonna be able to generate a lot of hand advantage. If you notice here, her attack power is low. Uh, on her unawakened side, it's 5,000. On the awakened side, it's only 10,000. So that's something that uh, can be a little bit of detrimental to running this deck, but um, you can make it work with giving all of your battle cards the blocker ability. So let's go ahead and we're going to look at the deck. This is a red-yellow deck. So uh, it's half the deck, well not half the deck, but a good portion of the deck is red with the rest of it being yellow. And that's going to open us up to some interesting plays. Um, we're going to start here with the Whis the Spectator um, and let's check out his effect. So he's got a permanent effect. First of all, he's got energy exhaust. So that what that means is if you put this card into your energy, it has to go in rest mode. But he has a permanent ability. If you have a red, yellow, multiclayer card in your energy other than this card, you're going to be able to ne negate this card's energy exhaust in all areas. So once you have one red, yellow charged, all you need is one. Once you have one red, yellow charged, then the rest of your uh, red, yellow, multiclayer cards, they're going to be able to go in ignoring energy exhaust. Um, I've never used this card, uh, played it to play the auto. I only use it for uh, the charging aspect of the game. Um, and I, I run three in this deck. I could easily bump it to four uh, to get maximum use out of it, but I, I run three in the deck. Um, we could talk about the counters. We've got two after image technique. Uh, what this card does is if your leader card is red, you're going to choose up to one of your cards and it's going to get plus 40,000 power for the duration of the battle. Uh, then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and it's going to get minus 10. So this is a useful card. Uh, like we said, Bulma has a very low attack power. So this is useful for boosting her up to get over an attack. Also, this has a sparking five where you can activate this card's counter from your hand by taking a card from your life instead of having to tap the energy. So if you've already paid up all your energy on your previous turn, you don't have any more energy, but you don't want to take that double strike or triple strike or whatever or critical, then you'll be able to activate this counter and you can boost up your leader instead. The other counter we're playing in this deck is Denial of Hope. For two red energy, if your leader card is red, which it is, your bulma is red, uh, the battle card your opponent is playing has t a power of 20,000 or less, then it's going to be placed in the drop area instead of being played. And this is a super useful card. Um, uh, you can really throw your opponent off. They're going to go to try and make their big move. If you can hold out to that energy and then tap it when they go to make their big move, then you can catch them off guard. This deck, I play it with the kind of grind them out style. Um, and I'm not uh, trying to go all in at once. I really try to grind out my opponent and just catch them off guard with some of my bigger, bigger plays later on, turn four or five or six. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the battle cards here. We're going to start with Sun Goten rushing in. We run four of this little guy. 
Uh, he's a got revenge. When this card is attacked, you can KO the attacking battle card at the end of the battle. But thanks to Bulma's leader ability, he's also going to have blocker. So this is very good in the early game. You can get him on board. Sun Goten rushing in. You're going to be able to get him on board. And he's a blocker with revenge. So when they go to swing, he's going to KO whatever the attacking card was that swung at him. Um, the super combo is a, su a support attack Sun Goten. We're running four of these. When you combo with this card, if your leader is, is red and your life's at four or less, draw one. So it's very generic. You're going to have the plus 10,000 and you're going to draw one. Once again, deck building 101 tip. You're going to want to run four of the super combo, no matter what. You're always looking for four super combos every time you go to sit down and build a deck. Um, we've got another pseudo super combo over here, Unbreakable Super Saiyan Sun Goku. Um, I call him a pseudo super combo because for one energy, as you can see, you can combo with this card and he's going to give you a 10,000 boost. Um, also, when you when a card evolves in this card or if you combo with this card, you're able to draw one. Um, you can evolve him onto a couple of the other yellow Sun Gokus that are in the deck. They're down here, so we're going to take a look at them in a minute. So you can evolve him, but normally I'm using him as a combo. I'm not evolving him. I'm going to go ahead and use him as a combo. Uh, there is a play here now with the Gokus, so we're going to go from the reds down to these two yellow Gokus. We've got Super Saiyan 3 Sun Goku ever evolving. He's got an auto for one yellow energy. When you play this card, you're going to draw one. So he's going to replace himself in your hand. We're running three of these. So potentially you could evolve the unbreakable Super Saiyan Sun Goku onto this card. I've never done it. I wouldn't do it. Um, he's got an activate main of once per turn where you can look at the top five cards of your deck and you can choose up to one red or yellow um, Sun Goku uh, GT or Pan card among them added to your hand and that's for one yellow energy. Um, I don't really use that often either. I mostly just use his auto to draw one extra card. Plus when he's in your battle area, he's going to gain blocker. So remember that all these Saiyan cards, because this deck is full of, of Saiyans, uh, they're all going to gain blocker. So that's what makes these cards useful. Um, the other one drop Sun Goku is Super Saiyan 3 Sun Goku, the last draw. Uh, he has a cool auto. When you choose one card in your life and add it to your hand, when this card attacks, it's going to get plus 10,000 power and double strike for the duration of the turn. Now, the way that the ruling is on this card with the wording is it doesn't say, you know, once per turn. So technically you can add cards in your life to your hand and keep gaining that 10,000 power. Theoretically, is that's one thing you can do with it. Um, so he's he's in here he's a one drop he's gonna gain blocker so if you don't swing with him you'll have a blocker on board uh also he can evolve into this super saiyan uh three sun goku uh, or i'm sorry the unbreakable super saiyan sun goku he can evolve into that but i'm not using them to evolve into that instead i can evolve them into this guy right here the great ape sun goku abilities amplified i'm running four of these so i can ex evolve onto a yellow sun goku gt with an energy cost of one so, and you just play this card on top of it. So you can, uh, theoretically, you can play out the Super Saiyan 3 Sun Goku, you can draw one card, you can tap a red energy, and you can evolve it into this. Auto, when a card evolves into this card, it's gonna get plus 15,000 power for the duration of the turn. So now he can um, go up to, from 20 up to 35, you got a big beat stick on board. Um, I mean, it's, it's a cheap play. You, you can do that with this deck. Um, let's see, let's keep on going down here with the yellows now. We're gonna talk about this extra card, Planet Vegeta. It's a field card, and what the way that this is going to work is uh, at the end of your turn, you switch all of your great apes in your battle area back to active mode. So let's say we go ahead and do the play where we evolve into the great ape Sun Goku abilities amplified. We swing with him with his 35. We're able to get a damage off of our opponent, take one of their lives. Then if we have Planet Vegeta in play, then that card is going to restand at the end of the turn, and then we can use him as a blocker. So that's going to be crucial. Um, the other effect from Planet Vegeta is when this card is placed in your battle area, you're going to choose up to one Saiyan with an energy cost of four or less from your deck, and you're going to add it to your hand, then shuffle your deck. I like to have Planet Vegeta out early. Uh, that way I can get its effect and I can ensure that my great apes are going to be getting their um, restand at the end of my turns. Uh, and I know that that's going to be going on early in the game because I have to do everything I can to protect Bulma and protect those lives. Heading over to this card here, we've got Trunks the Cunning. This is a one of. The reason why it's a one of is because auto, when you play this card, you're going to draw one, then for the duration of the game. So you only need one of these guys. If the turn player would use the skill of a battle card or an extra card to switch their energy to active mode, so that's like a Dimension Magic or a Sensu Bean, they can't switch energy active mode unless they choose five cards from their drop and send them to their warp. 
So he's a good little, you know, he's something that can stop um, your opponent from just abusing abusing cards that restand energy. So that's blue blue decks. A lot of blue decks like to do that. And um, if he stops, you know, if he's able to stop that, you only need one of them because it's going to carry you out for the whole duration of the game. So we stuck one in. And don't forget, he's going to have blocker. The next card here, we've got uh, three of Unwavering Solidarity Torah. So this is like a little tech card that I have in the deck. Uh, if your opponent has two or more battle cards in play and rest, then I can play this card from my hand without paying the energy. So that could be useful. Get a blocker on board for free. Um, and there's another card that's going to synergize with him. When you play the Planet Vegeta card, now that we're getting into the Great Apes, remember this little Unwavering Solidarity Torah, because now we're going to get into the Great Ape cards of the deck. Planet Vegeta can search one out for you, a four cost or less. So let's look at the options we have here. Um, to go along with Unwavering Solidarity Torah, we have Hidden Power Great Ape Torah. So he has an auto. During your turn at the end of the battle, if you combo with this card, you're going to choose up to one Torah in your battle area and you're going to evolve it into this card. So let's say you played out the um, Unwavering Solidarity Torah your last turn for free, or even if you played him out um, this turn for free because your opponent had the two cards in rest. Uh, you swing with, I mean, you could even swing with your leader. You could swing with Bulma. You could tap one energy. These cards take one energy to combo with. You can see it right there. You'll tap one energy, combo with this card, and then you can put him, evolve him um, on top of your Torah. When a card evolves into this card, you're going to choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode, and you're going to KO that card. So there goes the synergy. Uh, remember, deck building 101 tip. When you're building decks, you're trying to pick the cards that are going to synergize well with each other. So you can see the reasoning here. This is just a budget build. It's, it's, it's not designed to take over the national scene. It's just, you know, just a fun deck. But you can see here where I'm trying to pick cards that are going to synergize well. We've got Tora, we've got uh, his evolution, uh, evolution evolution form, or evolved form, I should say. And um, it's got some decent effects. He's got blocker, 20,000. 20, you could put pressure uh, off that. So that's not bad. For one energy, you're getting him on board. Um, Bardock, Will of Iron, I'm running one of these. Uh, he's a double striker with blocker. During your turn at the end of the battle, if you come with this card, you're gonna choose up to one of your Bardock and evolve into this card. Obviously, we're not using it for the auto. Um, we're not evolving it onto anything. The way that we're getting him on board is through this, March of the Great Ape. Uh, we run four of these, choose up to two Great Ape cards with energy cost of four or less from your hand and play them, then draw two cards. This deck has unlimited draw power, it seems like. I've, I've, every time I play this deck, I've gotten down to like only three cards left in, in the deck because I just draw so much. I mean, from the leader, she's drawing every turn. My, I have eight basically super combos that are going to be drawing for me every time i play this guy i'm drawing a card every time i play this guy i'm drawing a card um when i play planet vegeta i'm getting another card to my hand um even the super saiyan 3 sun gokus when you activate their effect you're taking a card from your life so i've never had an issue um with draw power with this deck and then the final great ape card which is kind of the main boss of the deck which which i try to focus on is great ape prince vegeta he's got critical and blocker uh, auto, when you play or combo with this card, you're going to look it up to three cards from the top of your deck. You'll choose one great ape uh, and add it to your hand. And if you do, you're going to place one card from your hand to the drop area. Then you'll shuffle your deck. So a great uh, turn, uh, first turn play would be to activate your planet Vegeta. You're going to search your deck for a great ape. Search out the great ape Prince Vegeta. You can use him to look through the next three cards. And then you can pick up any one of these great apes. So Bardock Will of Iron, you got the Hidden Power Great Apes the Great Ape Son Gokus, or another Great Ape Prince Vegeta. You'll be able to pick any of those targets. And off of March of the Great Ape, I mean, I, I, I've always been able to get this off um, turn four. And, you know, then that's when you start flooding out. And it's difficult because uh, you play these two guys out, you're going to, you know, say you play out the Bardock and the Great Ape. I mean, you're going to be putting pressure on your opponent with cards that are 20,000. Then they're going to restand. And that's where this deck can really start to grind is because you're going to always be restanding blockers and especially the great apes, they're all 20,000. Um, they're all 20,000. So that's something that your opponent's going to have a difficult time trying to get over is getting over those cards with their 20,000 attack power. So once again, deck building 101 tips. We're looking for cards that synergize well together. We're, we're, you can see where some of my choices um, with this deck being just a budget deck, a friendly deck. Uh, you can see how I pick these cards. 
um, even while I'm looking over this deck, I can see like, you know, ways that it can be made, you know, different or, or more to the meta, which is how, what meta means is what everybody's playing at this time. But, you know, this is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun for me to play with strategies that uh, most people wouldn't do or aren't using. And that brings a lot of excitement to the game. And it, you know, it makes me enjoy when, when my strategies go off. So, um, I thought that this is just a fun deck to bring to you guys. Plus, uh, tomorrow I'm going to get this video in, but tomorrow is going to be Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Ludi Bros wishing all the, all the moms in our lives happy Mother's Day. And, uh, as long as, except for Chi Chi, who doesn't have a leader yet, um, Bulma is the mom who is in Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, and she's got her deck here. So here's the deck that I have a, a budget build for Bulma. Go ahead and enjoy it. I hope you guys uh, maybe test it out, have some fun with it. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy playing with it. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you guys next time.